Welcome back to the Hard Box News Corner. Today, Intel has unveiled a whole suite of information relating to their upcoming products, including Tiger Lake CPUs and XE graphics, all of which we'll be working through. We've been hearing lots of teasers and leaks about these designs for a while now, but today's the day Intel are starting to take the wraps off what they've been working on. So if you're interested in how Intel's future products are shaping up, this will be the video for you. Most of the announcements today are concerning architectures, specifically for Tiger Lake, some XE GPUs, and the new Willow Cove CPU core design. There are a few feature updates to talk about as well. What we aren't seeing are any specific SKUs or product configurations just yet. We can expect more information on that during Intel's official Tiger Lake launch in early September. But there is a fair bit of juicy information here and confirmation of some aspects that have been rumored for months. So let's get into it. The first new piece of information surrounds Intel's process technology, which has been talked about extensively over the last few weeks with the news of Intel delaying their seven nanometer process node by a year. Intel didn't really talk about seven nanometer in this presentation, but did describe the changes they have made to the process node that is being used for their upcoming processes, such as Tiger Lake. As we know, 10 nanometer has had a troubled journey, first launching in 2018's Cannon Lake, which was a bit of a dud and only saw one mediocre seat. CPU hit the market. Then in 2019, we got 10 nanometer plus, which Intel retconned back to 10 nanometer, which was used for low power Ice Lake parts. While Ice Lake is a decent product that delivered respectable performance, largely on the back of architectural improvements, it was clear that 10 nanometer wasn't exactly delivering the sorts of clock speeds and efficiency that Intel would have liked. Maximum clock speeds topped out just above 4 gigahertz with very low base clocks, and so far, that 10 nanometer process node hasn't been been used for any high performance CPUs. With Tiger Lake, Intel have made significant improvements to their 10 nanometer technology. Most of the nitty gritty technical details are beyond the scope of this channel, so if you after a bit more information, I would suggest reading Anantex coverage, but essentially Intel have worked hard to, in their words, redefine the FinFET. And as a result, Intel have ditched the plus designation for this 10 nanometer node. We're not looking at 10 nanometer plus or 10 nanometer plus plus at this point, but rather 10 nanometer super fin. Yep, that's right. The new node is officially called 10 nanometer super fin. The reason why Intel have chosen a new naming scheme for this revised 10 nanometer node is that they have achieved much larger gains going from 10 nanometer, that's Ice Lake's 10 nanometer to 10 nanometer super fin, than they achieved with any plus revision to 14 nanometer. With 14 nanometer pluses, Intel typically saw a 5 to 6% performance improvement. With 10 nanometer super fin, Intel is showing, based on their graph, a 17.5% gain over the previous node. This is using unspecified metrics, but at least Intel are now willing to put some exact numbers to their new 10 nanometer node and what it should offer over the previous generation. Intel described this as a gain comparable to a full node transition, which is a bold claim. It's also moneyed by the starting point for 10 nanometer, which was below Intel's usual standards. There was certainly a lot of room for improvement in this node, but on a positive note, it does sound like Intel have made serious and warranted improvements to the node, I'm sure getting themselves much closer to where they would have liked to be at the initial launch of 10 nanometer. Intel have also revealed that the node following 10 nanometer superfin will be called 10 nanometer enhanced superfin, which will offer additional performance and optimizations for the data center at a future date. It's set to be used in Sapphire Rapids for the data center, scheduled for the second half of 2021. With 7 nanometer getting delayed into 2022, this 10 nanometer enhanced superfin node is likely the intermediary replacement. What does 10 nanometer super fin allow Intel to do in practice? Well, again, we are now for the first time getting some concrete information. So the first CPU core built on 10 nanometer super fin is Willow Cove, the cornerstone of Intel's new Tiger Lake CPU package, succeeding Sunny Cove and Ice Lake. We know that Ice Lake couldn't clock very high on 10 nanometer, with turbos just tickling 4 gigahertz and four core sustained frequencies often sitting below 2 gigahertz at 15 watts. With Willow Cove and 10 nanometer super fin, Intel is seeing a large boost in frequency at a given voltage, as seen in this chart. It's not clear how accurate this depiction is, but given the scale on the right, Intel is suggesting Willow Cove will clock 800 megahertz plus higher at a given voltage in the lower range of the CPU. This leads to better power efficiency. Same frequency as before with Sunny Cove, but at a lower voltage. But it also goes beyond this. 
Sunny Cove on 10 nanometer was capped to around 4 gigahertz, with 10 nanometer not tolerating high voltages that well. Willow Cove on 10 nanometer Superfin looks to be capable of higher voltages, which allows for higher turbo frequencies overall, in addition to better clocks at the same voltage. This chart shows turbos topping out in the 4.7 gigahertz range. 15 to 20% higher than Intel were offering previously. But Willow Cove isn't just a frequency boost allowed by Intel fixing up their 10 nanometer node. There are also changes to the architecture. Intel says this design builds on the advancements made with Sunny Cove, but brings with it a redesigned cache architecture as well as control flow technology, which appears to be further hardware security controls to protect against attacks and flaws. And again, Intel are emphasizing here the dramatic increase to frequency that's possible. On the cache system, there are two major changes here. One is an increase to the often forgotten level 2 cache or mid-level cache. Sunny Cove featured 512 kilobytes per core, itself an improvement on the 256 kilobytes per core with Skylake. Willow Cove bumps that up to 1.25 megabytes per core, a pretty substantial increase. For reference, AMD's Zen 2 core design has 512 kilobytes of L2 per core. Level 3, or last level cache, has also received a 50% size increase. For a quad-core design, we should now be seeing 12 megabytes of level 3 cache, as this image from Intel illustrates, versus 8 megabytes in previous designs. Again, for reference, AMD Zen 2 APUs have 8 megabytes of level 3 cache for 8 cores. We don't know the final core count of Tiger Lake CPUs yet, but we are expecting a quad-core design. Intel aren't talking about single thread performance improvements or new instruction sets with Willow Cove, which suggests the main improvements to the design are around the cache system, security features, and also the frequency bump from 10 nanometer Superfin. Instead, the next architecture to feature major improvements to single thread performance should be Golden Cove in 2021. Of course, Willow Cove CPU cores will first be used in Intel's Tiger Lake CPU design, which will first launch for low power devices next month. But there's more to the Tiger Lake design than just Willow Cove. We're also seeing big improvements to graphics, memory, and other features built into this processor. On graphics, Tiger Lake is the first CPU from Intel to use an XE GPU, specifically XELP. According to Intel, this brings a large improvement to performance per watt, as well as more execution units in the unlocked design. The Gen 11 GPU in Ice Lake was itself a substantial upgrade on what came before it, bumping the EU count up to 64. Tiger Lake bumps that up again to 96 execution units, a 50% increase. There's also 3.8 megabytes of L3 cache here for the GPU. Larger GPUs require more memory bandwidth, and that's what Intel are providing here. The Tiger Lake architecture supports up to LPDDR4X4267, up from 3733, along with DDR4 3200, the same as Ice Lake. There is also the introduction of LPDDR5 5400 support, with LPDDR5 becoming available earlier this year. The wording here is a bit unclear as to whether initial Tiger Lake chips will support all these memory technologies, or whether there's just architectural support. Tiger Lake, as previously has been discussed, is the first CPU design from Intel to integrate support for both Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4. That's 40 gigabits per second of bandwidth on each port. There's also been a few improvements to providing DisplayPort over USB-C, and a big inclusion as seen on this slide is PCIe 4.0 integration, the first Intel CPU to offer that. As for other updates, we see new display output features, a new image processing pipeline, more power optimizations, and a second generation Gaussian and neural accelerator. Next up, we have more information on what Intel are doing with XE graphics. Most of the disclosures today surround their LP variant or low power variant, which is being used in Tiger Lake and their DG1 discrete GPU. But there's a few other things going on here as well. So as we talked about before with the Tiger Lake design, XELP includes up to 96 execution units. Each of these units doesn't appear to provide more flops per clock than the Gen 11 design based on Intel's statement of 1536 flops per clock here, but the amount of execution units is 1.5 times higher. We're also seeing 48 texels per clock and 24 pixels per clock in the back end. In addition to having more execution units in the design, Intel are also now able to clock their XELP GPU both higher at a given voltage and higher overall than their previous GPU design. This chart here suggests that at the same voltage, a Gen 11 GPU could clock at 1100 MHz versus 1600-ish MHz for the XE design. Then with the ability to push high overall as well, the clock ends up exceeding 1700 MHz by the looks of it. 
Again, lots of other new architectural pieces were disclosed here, but that's beyond the scope of our channel. So again, if you're interested in a more technical analysis, I always like reading the stuff from Anantec. XELP brings with it a new and improved media engine as well, with up to two times the throughput for encoding and decoding tasks. This includes up to 8K60 video playback with 12-bit Dolby Vision support. AV1 decoding is new to the design, as is HEVC screen content coding. We're also getting four display pipelines supporting HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4 maximum. We're also getting support for 8K and 360Hz displays. Perhaps there's display stream compression here, but this hasn't been listed specifically as a feature. Aside from Tiger Lake, XELP is set to be used for their DG1 discrete GPU, which is in production and scheduled for shipping in 2020. It's described as a GPU for mobile creators. There's also the SG1, which is the first Intel discrete GPU for the data center. Intel describes this as suitable for low latency Android cloud gaming and video streaming. It's set to ship later in the year with production starting soon. Then for high performance, Intel talked about their new tile design for XEHP, their data center class GPU. There are three variants available with one tile, two tiles, or four tiles. Not super relevant for most of our audience, but it is a little interesting to see what Intel is doing with their higher performance designs. XEHP will use the 10 nanometer enhanced SuperFin node and EMIB packaging. One of the bigger announcements coming out of Intel's graphics team is that the company is finally willing to put a specific timeline on discrete gaming grade GPUs. These GPUs will use a new microarchitecture variant called XEHPG, which according to Intel is supposed to combine the performance per watt of XELP with the scale of XEHP and compute power of XEHPC. Intel made some interesting announcements surrounding this gaming GPU today, so it's not just a this is coming type thing. Intel said their GPU will use a memory system based on GDDR6 as opposed to HBM like we expect for XEHP. There will also be hardware accelerated ray tracing support, which is key for any new GPU product moving forward that wants to make a serious mark in the enthusiast gaming space. Both Nvidia and AMD will have hardware accelerated ray tracing GPUs this year and of course through 2021. The other interesting tidbit here is Intel did announce that XEHPG GPUs will be fabricated using an external process, not Intel's 10 nanometer line. There was no word on what specific external process they'll be harnessing, but this is a very telling piece of information. It's likely that Intel's internal 10 nanometer process just isn't suited for the frequencies a gaming GPU requires, whereas both 10 nanometer SuperFin and 10 nanometer enhanced SuperFin are capable in a low frequency more power-optimized XELP or XEHP design. It will also mark one of the first major products from Intel in the consumer space that is fabbed at an external third party. Intel has been using external fabs here and there from time to time, but manufacturing a product like a gaming GPU is big news. Couple of other tidbits to round out this look at Intel's architecture announcements. The first is that the heavily rumored Alder Lake processor will indeed be a hybrid design and a successor to this year's Lakefield. As a reminder, Lakefield combines Sunny Cove high performance cores with Tremont low power cores from their Atom line in the one design. Alder Lake will combine next generation Golden Cove and Gracemont cores with a release in 2021. Then there's two new graphics driver features. One is called Instant Game Tuning, and this is a way for Intel to push game-specific driver optimizations and fixes to users faster without a full driver install and on a per-game basis. Think of this as getting an NVIDIA Day 1 driver update for a game, but instead of needing to download the entire driver package, Intel is just pushing the optimizations for the game, and only if you opt in to downloading the bits for that game. Pretty neat concept, we'll see how that plays out. The other is game sharpening, bringing Intel's driver capabilities in line with Nvidia and AMD, who both offer sharpening at the driver level. Intel is using a shader-based adaptive sharpening algorithm and will be available in the graphics command center. This is all part of Intel's work to bring their GPU driver up to the level of AMD and Nvidia ahead of that discrete gaming GPU launch in 2021. So that's it for Intel's announcements today. A lot of focus on architecture and some stuff like 10 nanometer super fin, Willow Cove, Tiger Lake, and also XE graphics. We will hear more about Tiger Lake in their September launch event for those processes. We should get SKUs, configurations, all that sort of thing there. 
But yeah, it's been a good look to see what exactly Intel should be offering with Tiger Lake in terms of features and architectures. So lots of interesting stuff here, and it'll be interesting to see how this fares up against AMD's Zen 2 and I guess Zen 3 designs in the coming months. So yeah, stay tuned for more information on that. As always, you can subscribe to get more News Corner in your inbox every week. We also have our Patreon page. Links to that are in the description below. Thanks for watching, 20% Club, and I'll catch you in the next one.